Hey guys, Adam from South from Dog Training. <coughs> it's been brought to my attention that apparently people are liking my random waffle talks as I'm out with the dogs. Uh, this is my last day with Bruce and Buddy who is over there. Uh, come Bruce, come bud. Uh, come on, get it. Yeah. So I'm gonna try and make these a daily thing if I can. Uh, before we get into the thing, if I just ask you very quickly why you're watching this, because you will be watching this on YouTube, is can you just, as you're watching this, scroll down, hit that like button, and click subscribe, okay? The more people that see this, the more popularity the videos get, the more people can get this advice, okay? So, I'm not going to ramble on about idiot dog owners that think it's acceptable to allow their dogs to run over to you when you've got your dogs on lead okay we've done that feel free to check them out i'll put a little playlist in the description today i want to talk about puppies okay because i get a lot of questions from people about puppies asking for help asking for advice so we're going to do a brief conversation on the do's and don'ts of puppies okay so the first thing you need to do this is if you're thinking of getting a puppy, you need to make sure you get the breed that is suitable to you and your family, okay? <coughs> Excuse me. Don't get a dog based on something you've seen on television, based on what your friends got, based on appearance or anything like that. Because the biggest mistake I see when I go into clients' houses is the wrong dog, wrong owner, okay? There is a dog out there for everyone. But if you're a lazy family, don't have time to do lots of exercise, don't go out and get yourself a Belgian Malinois because you've seen a film, okay? Don't get yourself a working dog because these are gonna be dogs that need to be out there, need to be doing something, okay? If you're an active family and you've got time to sufficiently exercise it, mentally stimulate it, then yeah, go and get a working dog. But make sure you get do your research make sure you get a dog that is suited to you and your family make sure you're aware if you're going to get a husky how much that dog's going to shed yeah it's constant never stops okay so don't ask questions how do i stop my husky shedding you shouldn't have got a husky okay don't get a belgian malinois and go the dog never switches off it's not bred to <laughs> it's a high drive dog he wants to keep going and going and going, okay? Don't get a Mastiff and go, oh, I want the dog to run with me. Mastiffs are built for short bursts, okay? So there is a dog out there for everyone, okay? Be aware of that. Be aware when you research the dog. Make sure you get a dog that is appropriate to you and your family, not a dog because you like the way it looks, okay? So once you've got the dog, okay, what you want to do is you want to crate train it or teach it bed, okay? And this is extremely important. Puppies are very much like babies, okay? So they basically eat, sleep, poop, repeat, yeah? And that's pretty much what a puppy does. It eat, sleeps, poops, repeats, okay? So what you're best off doing is making sure you condition that dog <clears throat> that the crate is a good place. Don't just put the dog in the crate and turn and shut the door and hope for the best. That's the quickest way to make your dog hate the crate. Okay. Woofs, this way. That's the quickest way to get your dog to not like the crate. Okay. So what you do, you do a little mini training session with a dog, teach you to sit, teach you to lay down, get do all the things that you're going to use when you're out and about. Okay, do this for five, 10 minutes. Puppies, they get tired very, very quickly. You do this, the puppy's knackered. Take it into the garden. As soon as it does the toilet, make a big, big fuss of it. Then go and pop it in the crate, let it sleep. As soon as the puppy wakes up, bring it out, straight into the garden, let it go to the toilet. Keep it on a lead though, guys, because puppies will get up to no good. They'll pick up things they shouldn't. They get very mischievous. So, just do that. This way. Uh, and then do another training session with the dog, a little play session, a little interaction session with the dog. Yeah, 
and just repeat that process. By doing this, you're teaching the dog it's okay to settle, it's okay to switch off. Yeah, because one of the biggest problems I see when I go into houses is anxiety in dogs, where they can't switch off. Bruce, yep. Got a couple of dogs over there. So let's do some impulse control, shall we? Sit, <coughs> sit. Get the dogs there. I can just do a little bit of impulse control. I don't think she's going the other way. We have been spotted by the Wymarana. If it was a run over here, the eight lady's got her other dog on the lead. Oh no, it's going back. Actually, she's nice to see a responsible dog owner. She called her dog back. She's seen what we're doing. It looks like she's going the other way. Yeah, so that's it. <coughs> it's my fault. And I said, yeah. Uh, so, yeah, so puppies, <laughs> they switch off very quickly. We've addressed this part, haven't we? No, so we go to um, anxiety. It's one of the most common issues I get called for when I'm working with dogs. Uh, and it stems generally from puppyhood, the inability to switch off. Uh, and that comes from never teaching the dog to settle. Yeah, so if you get it from the get-go, pop it in a crate, uh, once you've done a little bit of training with it and once it's been in the garden to go to the toilet then that dog will sleep. Often if you've got a puppy you'll notice that it will sleep a lot around the house. Instead of letting the puppy choose when to sleep, where to sleep, <coughs> pop it in the crate. You know the dog's tired. The other thing is as well, okay, is puppy pads. Okay, they're a big no-no. Right? If I go to clients houses who's still struggling with toilet training when the dog's past six, seven, eight months, often nine out of 10 of those people have used puppy pads. Puppy pads are a terrible, terrible idea because they actually condition your dog to wee in the house. They do. Everywhere your dog wees, you pop down a puppy pad. What that's doing is marking where the dog can go to the toilet. I went into a house once and that, that I must have counted about 15 puppy pads in the time Must have counted about 15 puppy pads. Break! <coughs> Must have counted about 15 puppy pads. Right? It was insane. Uh, they're, they're a really terrible idea. Don't ever buy puppy pads, guys. Okay? If you wanted to use a puppy pad, I may suggest popping one in your crate. Just as a little barrier to keep it clean. Yeah? But it's not a place to condition your dog to win in the house. The other thing to notice as well is if your dog wheeze in the house okay unless you catch him in the act there is nothing you can do about it yeah so <clears throat> if you do catch him in the act just say no and just take the dog into the garden okay do not rub the dog's nose in it do not scold the dog for it remember puppies do not have full bladder control no scold in the dog definitely don't be a dick and rub its nose in the floor that doesn't work Okay, if anything, you can make the pup afraid to actually go to the toilet in your presence. Catch a puppy weeing, simply pop it in the garden. Okay, just get used to that habit. Puppy wees, always in the garden. Yeah, so there are a couple of things. Start as you mean to go on, guys. Yeah, so do all the things before your dog's had its vaccinations to go outside. Get it used to the lead, get it used to some obedience training. Do all of these things and understand that puppies do not grow out of bad behavior either so anything it does as a pup if you don't teach it otherwise it will continue to do it so many mistakes people make is when the puppy's nice and cute they let everybody come around and see it the puppy will jump up and you reward it for jumping up yeah you take the puppy out on the lead when it's small puppy pulls on the lead and you reward it by allowing it to pull on the lead yeah puppy mouths you and you reward it by trying to distract it with a treat you teach the dog every time it puts his mouth on you here you go have a toy instead or a treat instead yeah that's actually rewarding the dog that's a very fairy tale dog trainer method about mouthing but as so as you mean to go on guys anything your puppy does as a puppy it will continue to do as it gets older and by a year the dog's hit adolescence it's got canine uh, sorry adult canines and it's reached its full height uh, so be aware of that letting a puppy sit on your lap particularly if it's like a, a large breed dog like a Labrador or something understand that it's going to want to sit on your lap when it's 40 kilos yeah letting the puppy jump up at you when it's cute going oh look at the puppy understand it's going to do that when it's 40 kilos letting the puppy pull when it's cute understand it's going to do that when it's 40 plus kilos 
yeah start as you mean to go on guys okay there's just some little things you can do with a pup to help you i do highly recommend that you get yourself a dog trainer pre and post vaccinations to set you on the right path when it comes to pups yeah it'll just help a lot you select the right dog you get that training in early everything should go swimmingly for you but understand that puppies need to sleep a lot they need to be taught when to switch off they need some engagement okay get all of that in place and that's about it really guys for puppies of course there's a lot more to it uh, this is just some basic tips that should help start you on the right path okay oh one final thing because this is very important I knew there was something else I needed to say this video waffled on a little bit but uh, I've seen these two Tweedledee and Tweedledum just wrestling over a stick yeah one final thing I want to say <clears throat> when it comes to socializing your pup okay more is not always better people have this fallacy in their head that they need to mix their dog with as many dogs as possible as many people as possible and that's not true okay socializing is quite complex okay understand that when a puppy is young it is learning everything that it expo is exposed to so if you continually put your dogs around other crazy puppies around other crazy dogs that's what your dog will imitate if you put your dog around needy whiny high-pitched yodely women and men hey puppy look at you you're adorable that nonsense that's gonna create problems for your dog yeah it's gonna create a lot of excitement that you don't want around people so it's very important to expose your dog to other dogs other people other sites other sounds other places all right but make sure that you're creating positive experiences okay put your dog around calm balanced people calm balanced dogs 